Hi friends. Today I just wanted to share with you a signal grace that I recently received and just how good the Lord is and assure you of how very much you are loved by God even when you can't feel it. <laughs> Even when life is tough and it takes everything you have just to get out of bed and put one foot in front of the other, he is with you and he, um, he loves you. Well, here's the thing. I'm very good at reminding other people about how much they are loved by God, but sometimes a lot of the time, I question whether I really and truly believe that myself. Despite, you know, the many ways and the many times that God tells us about his love in scripture, sometimes when we're up against all the, uh, the negativity and the things of this world, it's easy to not feel so loved. <laughs> anyway, I was having one of those moments last Sunday in church. I was sitting in the pew waiting for mass to begin and I could see the line of people for confession and the line was sh unusually short. And I sat there and, you know, I began beating myself up. Number one, because I was kind of down that day, and I just, I know this probably doesn't say very good things about me, but I just really didn't feel like being in church that day. I made myself go. I knew it was the right thing to do, but I honestly just didn't want to be there. So I started tearing myself down mentally, saying, you know, you're just, you're such a scum. <laughs> um, how could you possibly be worthy of God's love? He loves you so much and you don't even love him enough to want to be here today. And then I'm thinking, you know, I feel dirty. I feel like I should go to confession. But then, you know, you're such a scumbag that, you know, when's the last time you've done a good examination of conscience? How can you have a good confession if you hadn't even really thought about you know, your sins beforehand. So I was tearing myself down and these tapes, these negative tapes in my head that were playing were interrupted by a redeeming thought, a good thought, a thought that only could have come from God. And the words came to me and it says, would you just allow yourself, Dana, to be loved by me? Would you just allow yourself to be loved by me? And at our church in the center of the altar, the um, high altar has been restored and then, like I said, in the middle, is a beautiful statue of the sacred heart of Jesus and he's pointing to his heart. And so I looked up at that image of Jesus as I was hearing those words. And strangely, or not so strangely, the negative thoughts just immediately went away. <laughs> And that's not usual for me. Usually when I struggle with negative thoughts, they're kind of difficult to break. Usually I have to, you know, change an activity or change a location. Um, but here, sitting in the pew, immediately after hearing those words, the negative thoughts went away. I later, when I was sharing this with someone else, they said, you know, Whose voice were you hearing when you were hearing all those bad things about yourself? 
And originally I thought it was me beating myself up and I'm sure to some degree it was. But uh, the person said, what about the devil? You know, could the devil have been putting those thoughts in your mind, um, particularly in church? It's like, wow, maybe so, maybe so. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, Throughout the week, as I read my little Magnificat and the daily readings and the daily meditations, I was reading this one little meditation and it was a couple pages long, so I couldn't tell who the author was until I turned the page. But it was all about God's love for us, um, loving God with our whole hearts, and sharing the love of God with others, you know, leading other souls to him through love. And I got to thinking, I said, oh my goodness, this sounds so very much like St. Therese of Lisieux. <laughs> I got a statue right here. Hold on. This was one that was given to me. It was found in a closet at school and she was broken and faded and in bad disrepair and um, the person told me that I could have it so I took her home and restored her and she's just here to remind me of uh, God's love and our call to love that's what the world really needs right now lots of love right <laughs> anyway I turned the page and sure enough, it was a, a letter or, you know, a long quote from St. Therese of Lisieux. So I've been asking her to please pray for me and help me to not only love God and others more, but to love myself as well. You know, in scripture, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> Well, if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love your neighbor, right? Uh, we have to believe that we were cre created by God and, you know, for a purpose and that we were um, placed in our mother's wombs out of love. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I consecrated you, he tells Jeremiah. So on my way to work or on my way home from work one day that week after reading, hearing that in mass, reading the beautiful little letter from St. Therese of Lisieux, this white SUV passes me on the side and I noticed the license plate. The license plate said the number two, the letter B, loved to be loved Dana will you allow yourself to be loved by me <laughs> and as soon as I saw that license plate which I guess could be considered in this case a signal grace or a confirmation you know I was finally like you know Lord I'm a slow learner and I got a hard head but got it thank you Thank you for that reminder. So I just wanted to share this story with you and I hope that maybe if you've been beating up on yourself or, or struggling in any way that you, this story might inspire you or remind you how very, very much you are loved and you know, if you're struggling, uh, pray more, um, ask the Lord, ask <laughs> your favorite saint, St. Therese of Lisieux, I highly re recommend her, um, to pray for you, to increase your love for God, increase your love for neighbor, but to help you to love yourself. Have a wonderful day and God bless you.